What is up, my Dex and Drakes? Welcome to the Crotter Lake. Today we are reading chapters 1 through 6 of Trip Down Memory Lane by me. Your warnings consist of Suicide, Blood, and Knives at chapter 1, Suicide at chapter 2, Vomit, Intrusive Thoughts, Inappropriate Dialogue at chapter 5, and Suicide and Overdose at chapter 6. If any of these make you feel uncomfortable, please log off the video now, and I hope that you are doing good, and you could join us next time. With that, on with the story. Chapter 1. There is always a beginning. Third person. Point of view. It had almost been a year now, and Pettin was not doing well. To see the Remus had him all wishy-washy. How was he supposed to be Pettin when he didn't feel like Pettin? Christmas is rolling around, and Pettin is thinking of how he can brighten up for the holidays. With the funk that Thomas and him were in, it'd be hard to get into the Christmas spirit they usually are in. What would the others think? What would Thomas's friends think? He needs to keep them satisfied with Thomas. It was his job to make sure that Thomas was happy. Thomas could be in trouble if he doesn't keep his happy ego going on. Well, now that Thomas has Disney+, Plus, he can distract himself with movies like they did with Frozen. This is one of those days where Pettin just wished that he could watch Disney with his friends in onesies all week, but there is work to be done. Pen was at his desk thinking of what to get his friends for Christmas when a knock was heard from his door. Pen literally was knocked out of his seat with fright. With a thump of the chair he was in, Logan sped in to see if Pettin was okay instead of waiting for his approval to come in. Logan knelt down beside the chair that was keeping Pettin to the ground and lifted him from under it. Pettin, are you all right? Logan asked with a gleam in his eyes that Pettin never seen before. Pettin had to think for a second. Was he all right? His head couldn't stop throbbing and black dots flashed through his vision. His chest shakes with pain when he took a breath and he felt sore all over. He couldn't tell Logan though. I'm fantastic, Lo. I just fell back when you knocked on the door. It surprised me, kiddo. The logical trait looked deep into Morality's eyes. He seemed to be examining him. He then got into, onto one knee and hoisted himself up, then reached out a hand to grab Patton's. When he met Logan's hand, his stomach pain turned into flutters, like butterflies when swirling around. He was probably just nervous about falling back in his chair again. Thank you, Logan, Patton said as perky as possible. I suppose you're busy, so I'll let you be on your way. Pettin just wanted to be alone in his room to think and write and find ways to get him back to when life was simpler, happier, better. May I remind you that I'm the one that came to get you, not the other way around. I do have something to address with you for a brief moment. Pattin. Crud! He just wanted to be left alone. Logan doesn't like leaving his room unless absolutely necessary, let alone go into other people's rooms. So he supposed it was important. Sure, Lo, what's up? He f featured for me. He, he gestured for me to sit on the bed. He looked down a bit as if he was almost sad. When I went to check on Virgil, he didn't seem to be doing very well. Now, instead of answering back with, is Virgil okay or what's happening, he responded with, why did you check on him? Pettin, have you forgotten so soon? You're the one who asked if someone could check on Virgil at least twice a day if he hasn't left his room. Before the movie night, he was in his bedroom for four days. After it, he went back into his room and never came out. If you've lost track of time, it has been about two or three weeks. You really haven't been out of your room either, Pattern. Is everything running smoothly? He wanted to tell the truth. He just didn't have the courage to. I'm just in a bad mood right now, Logan. It's been a tough year for me. Logan hesitated, but he did put a gentle hand on Pattern's shoulder in comfort. Wow, it was the most calming thing he had ever felt. We all have Pattern, but not only a fresh new year awaits us, but a fresh new decade. Though time is just a construct. I know that it encourages you to start anew. Once we find the problem, we can solve it. Then we can work together to move forward from these bad times. 
But for now, take it easy. I was going to tell you something about Virgil, but I don't want to disturb you or make anything worse. What do you mean? What's going on with Virgil? He stared at me with the softest smile gracing his lips and said, Nothing to your concern. Pam was going to have to give in and just let him do his thing, but something else inside of him had different plans. If anyone should know what is going on with anxiety, it should be me. I said, Patton said sternly, but Patton meant well. As the hardened Thomas, I could help him. Logan straightened his glasses, then knelt down by where Patton was sitting on the bed and looked right into his eyes. I don't want anything to get worse. This may hurt Thomas more if you found out. I need to go and check on him again. What could be so bad that I can't find out about it? He is my dark strain son. If anyone should know, it should be me. Logan sighed and pulled up Patton's wooden chair to next to the bed. He played with his blue tie for the rest of the minute while Patton looked down at his hair. The way it moved distracted him from all of his problems for a split second before Logan decided to cough and clear his throat. If you really want to know what is going on with Virgil, I do not have any right whatsoever to keep this crucial information from you. If you are open to hear it, I will tell you. Morality thought for a second. Maybe he doesn't want to know, but if Logan decided to go through all this double because he pestered him, he should be open to hearing it. Plus, Patton wants to help his shadowy but angelic so songbird. I am always an open book, though. His eyebrows crumpled up for a second before Patton replied. That means I am always ready to hear you talk. Oh, yeah, well, Logan glanced at my hand, at Patton's hand, which Patton had placed on his bouncing knee, and placed his hand on top of it. He then looked right into Patton's eyes, even though Patton was looking down. But when he did look up, his soft brown eyes looked right into his soul. I went to check on Virgil, and he was pale as a ghost. He hasn't eaten in two days. Tears threatened to come up in Patton's eyes. Why do I cry so easily? I must be strong, Logan, Patton thought. Logan must have noticed that Patton started to freak out because he started stroking the hand that he was holding onto on Patton's knee. Peeking out from under his pillow, I spotted a large sharp knife with dried blood on the tips. Lastly, on my way out, I have spotted a thrown out suicide note in the trash. Pam broke out into a silent sob as Logan tried his best to comfort him. Patton had no idea how to help, no clue how to stop it. Patton wouldn't be much help anyway. Patton couldn't tell someone to not do something that he tries himself. Though Logan was in a seat, sort of thinking that it was a prank that Remus did, Remus used to do pranks like this all the time. It was never funny to anyone except for him. But Patton should have known this too. But he got it. Patton was not overreacting. He was generally concerned. But what can he say except there's always a beginning? Chapter 2. Happily Listening Patton's Point of View It was another day waking up more tired than I was falling asleep. I figured that I should be the one who checks on Virgil today. Maybe I could help him. Sitting in my cat onesie that I put on at 3 a.m. when I woke up, I walked down to Virgil's room. Everyone, except for me, was awake when Thomas wakes up. I am the only side allowed to sleep when his human is awake. Knock, knock, knock. Three times, I knocked on my son's door. A yell came from the room, then a monotone moan. I heard sheets, then shifting feet on the floor getting closer. Anxiety opened the door and smiled a bit when I was the one standing there. Good morning, Virgil, I said in a teary voice. I used to cover how tired I was. Can you come in, Patton? I was a bit shocked at the statement. Usually Virgil doesn't willingly let people into his room. Sure, kiddo. 
I walked in, absorbing the designs and colors that somehow comforted me a bit. I looked over at Virgil, who gestured for me to sit down next to him on his bed. I sat down, and the side on the bed which I sat down and barely moved on. Virgil seemed to be focusing on that, but then snapped out of it. Are you okay, Pat? This was not what I was expecting out of this talk, but if I need to put on a show, I will. Of course! Now, what I wanted to know is if you were okay. Virgil seemed to want to scream, but he held it in and looked with concerned eyes. That's just it, Patton. No one is. I figured that he was just being his dark self, and I love when he does stuff like this. It's kind of cute. What do you mean, kiddo? I mean, no one is okay. As morality, you should know that how you feel affects everybody. Well, obviously, you're depressed because Thomas didn't leave bed all day. He's been crying. Logan didn't feel like eating. Roman doesn't want to watch Disney with me. Deceit has been under his lamp for the past two days. And Remus took a shower. Remus took a shower for God's sake! I didn't mean to hurt anyone, but instead of answering with something normal, I answered with what might have been an offensive question. How am I affecting you? Rudder then stood up and looked right into my eyes. I thought Logan told you. When Thomas is in a negative state, I get depressive shocks. With these negative emotions you give off, plus my extremely anxious aura, it gives me suicidal thoughts. I could hear you and Logan talking about it last night, so don't act like you don't know. Virgil, who was on the verge of tears, get it? Verge? Anyway, about to cry, Virgil stormed into the bathroom and slammed the door behind him. I desired to make sure that the other side was doing okay with my negative shock waves or whatever. I next went to Logan's room. I once again knocked on the door three times in a row. Come in, shouted a what seemed to be tired Logan. Now Logan was the type to stay on every schedule, including his sleep schedule. I walked in, being hit by a breeze of cold air. Logan was sitting in his desk writing papers. His air conditioner was on full blast, and he had dark, bulging bags coming from his eyes. He turned towards me with relief coming from his tense brown eyes. Salutations, morality. What brings you here? My hands were behind my back, so I quickly conjured up a jumbo-sized jar of Logan's Barry Crofter jam. Oh, I'm just here to bring you this. I showed him the jar. It was the size of a gallon of milk. Logan stared at the glass for a couple seconds. No, thank you. I have serious business to attend to, and I do not have time for feelings of love, attachment, or crofters. Yes, Patton, I did con- include that crofters was an emotion after a Twitter post a fan typed reading, Logan's love for crofters is such a mood. Therefore, it is an emotion. <laughs> Logan, that's just modern slang. That's a mood means that it is relatable. I tried to make up some excuse on why Logan should eat his favorite food. No matter what it means, I do not have time for it. No, I was in utter, utter shock. I mean, Logan not wanting crofters? That's absurd. But Logan started walking towards me. I was wondering if you were okay, Patton. I answered right away, so it didn't look like I had to think about it. Of course! That fall yesterday wasn't that bad. The logical trait began to look kind of disappointed in his own way. No, Patton, I am asking if you're doing okay emotionally. I've come to the conclusion that something is bothering you. I want to know that you could talk to me. I'm rooting for you, Patton. Of course I knew that something was up. It was just a matter of me admitting to it. I know, Logan. I can always count on you. You are so cool. A half-smirk graced his lips as he turned his chair back towards his workstation. I stared at him for a second, breathing deeply. The way he worked, his posture, his facial features. It was obvious that Pat had a crush on him. But how does the most emotional being on the planet date someone without emotions? Or at least someone who doesn't like emotion? After a couple of minutes of me standing in the middle of his room, watching him work at his fine craft, Logan turned his head to speak to me. Are you leaving now? I let out a shaky breath, 
I had no idea that I was holding on to and turned towards the dark blue door. I made it and reached for the glossy handle. Have a nice day, Logan. Don't overwork yourself. I opened the door and started walking out of it. The response I got from Logan was an out of the blue one. You too, Patton. You too. Chapter 3, Flair for the Dramatics. Down the hall, thinking of what Logan said. Of course, why wouldn't I? I turned to see a bright red door covered in gold glitter. I knocked three times once again, waiting for an answer. But there was none. I knocked again, but louder, and I heard creaks of the mattress as I figured and moved it. Clunky footsteps came towards the door. The door handle jingled, and there was a princey I thought I would never see. His hair was ruffled and looked like it had been brushed in days. He was wearing black headphones with silver glitter. His, out his outfit was just a baggy white sweater with his logo and baggy gray jeans, sweatpants. He wasn't even wearing shoes. That was not my prince. Hey, Dad, what do you need? I stood there in that spot, thinking what I actually needed from him. I just want to know if you're alright, kiddo. His tired, moody expression changes to sad and empathetic. Sympathetic. Of course I'm okay, Patton. Now I want to know if you're okay. Without hesitation, I answered. Yeah, I'm great. Roman then gestured for me to come in. Here we go again. Now since the prince is, well, the prince, he won't hit as hard, but since he is also Thomas, he will hit hard enough. Patton, you know that we all love you, right? I nodded my head in agreement with his words. You could tell us when something is up so we could work through it together. I know you guys know what's up because we're the same person. Roman then out a long and heavy sigh. Well, Padre, we know how you feel, slightly because you have effects on Thomas. Besides that, we got nothing. We want to know how to help. We want to know if we can help you take your first steps. First steps? How could he take his first step if he can't even crawl? Great advice, Roman. You think we can watch a magical motion picture together? I'm in such a mood for one. The prince sat up for a second and thought, Maybe of an answer, or of what flick we should watch? He looked up from his thoughts and smiled graced his lips. Sure thing, Puffball. Maybe we could even get the others in here. I smiled, but then that smile presently vanished when I remembered that Virgil would most likely not like having a movie night. But then I also remembered that the prince has the hots for Virge. He didn't tell me, but it's obvious. Even to Logan. Okay. I'll ask Logan and you can ask Virgil. His face went scrunched for a second before bowing heroically in agreement and disappearing with a soft, but still groundbreaking pop. I know it would be a second before Roman came back, with or without Virgil. So I took time to look at all the works of Roman. One of the walls were covered in papers and canvases. There are pictures of all of us, even of the others. Then I got to one kind of hidden in the corner. It was a blank paper. Then sketch lines started appearing. The sketch lines then turned into more thin lines, which traced over by a black line. Finally, colored was added. It was a portrait of Roman getting down on one knee to Virgil. What was going on? Is it isn't like the Roman painted this thing himself. It just painted the canvas on its own. But then again, it is Roman after all. I just want to know why and how this came to be. I almost forgot, I need to get Logan for the movie night. I also need to get into my onesie. The cat onesie is my bestest -est 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 cat ever. I am so glad that I wear it. I just sure hope that Roman takes his time. I still need to ask Logan and hopefully he'll be down cause mental health, mental stuff, things, yeah. I appear outside of Logan's room with a soft pop and I knock on his door four times instead of three. He rushes to the door and is shocked to see me back. Greetings, once more, Patton. How may I help you? I look up at him with hopeful look in his eyes. I was wondering if you would like to watch a Disney movie. He stood for a second thinking of an answer. Well, I have lots of work to do and it is the holiday season. 
we wouldn't want to fall behind schedule. In act of desperation, I pulled out my secret weapon. The puppy eyes. Logan's posture started to falter and his eyes grew softer. Fine, Patton, you win. But we can't do this all the time. My spirits lifted back up and I teleported back to Roman's room. At Roman's bed, we found Roman looking deep into Virgil's eyes. Virgil didn't seem all too happy, though. What are you up to, kiddos? Roman snaps out of his gaze. What movie will we watch, Patton? I thought for a second. Well, Logan, I think Roman and Virgil should decide. I could have said, sat up and thought for a second. Hardest choice in the world for him, I tell you. I know exactly what to put in. He rushed over to the shelves in which housed the whole Disney franchise and pulled out Beating the Beast. Roman, if I did know better, which I do, I would say that you would be thoughts of Ferris during this movie, and I want to enjoy the flick. Now watch you recite the thing word per word. Additionally, you just got done with the play Beating the Beast as the Beast on stage. Maybe this is not a good idea. Oh, shut up, annoying Einstein! I can enjoy the movie how I want. If I want to recite the darn thing word per word, I will do that. Plus, when we watch documentaries for you, you just add more facts onto it, making it even more boring. At least I say what the movie is saying. All you do is talk over the flick. Virgil decided to just plus play and everyone immediately shut up. By the end of the opening song, I was out like a light. Chapter 4. Realization I woke up blinking, my eyes rapidly, not knowing where I was. I then realized I wasn't in my room, not even Roman's room. I was sleeping in Logan's bed with Logan on the recliner next to the desk. Foot rest up, and his glasses tilted slightly to the side and off his head. Logan's point of view, last night flashback. I was sitting on the edge of the prince's bed, slowly turning red with frustration as Roman began to sing the opening song. Honestly, I would have preferred watching something Padded wanted to see. Clearly, this event was his idea. Not that it mattered what Patton wanted to watch anyways, for he was asleep by the end of the first song. If I was paying attention to the movie, then how did I know Morality was asleep? Well, he decided to use me as about a body pillow. Plus, even though he was asleep, Virgil kept weirdly smiling at Patton, as in approval of a slumber. Emotions are confusing. As the movie progressed, I got more and more annoyed at Roman as he grew louder with each line he recited. He was going to wake up Patton. I then carefully slid the sleeping side under my arms and sat up, mustering all my strength to carry him. Where are you going, Logan? said Virgil tiredly as he turned from the television screen. I don't want Roman to wake Patton, and I am getting a headache. I thought I'd take him to bed and go to bed myself. I had no idea you had the strength to lift people, Logan. I also didn't know you cared so much for Patton. It's nothing special. I just want to make sure that Thomas is in an average state and Patton is our key to helping Thomas. Good night to the two of you. Don't stay up too late. We have work in the morning. Okay, Mom. Roman responded in a cocky tone. Riddle just looked up at me in exhaustion and then went back to the film. With careful coordination, I carried Patton up the stairs and to his room. When I went in it, the bed was so messy that there'd be no way he could sleep on it, so I carried him to my room to sleep on my bed till his bed was clean. Without shaking my arms too much, I unfolded the covers to the black bed cover and gently placed Morality into it. Once both of my arms were free, I tucked him in and brushed back his bangs from his eyes. His eyes were the window to the soul that no one could understand. I went to my recliner and sat and read a book. But I figured that Patton would most appreciate it if I cleaned his room for him. It probably needs my organization skills anyway. I closed the door carefully as I walked to Patton's room and examined the mess that he left for himself. There were tubs and tubs of empty cooking containers overflowing the trash can that Patton kept beside his bed. There were clothes all over the floor and there were small holes in the wall, almost like they were stabbed into. I first started with the floor, picking up piles of his clothes and put them into the wash, not knowing if they were clean or not. While the washer was going, I took out the mounds of cookie containers to the dumpster, where I found Remus curled up against a trash bag from weeks ago. 
Lastly, I vacuumed his bed, leaving no more cookie crumbs, and fixed his sheets so he could properly sleep in it. I went to the bathroom and washed off my hands before putting the clothes in the dryer. It seemed that Patty was out of soap. I lit open the medicine cabinet to see if he keeps extras. I didn't find a new bar of soap, but I have found some things that I was curious about from the shelves. I had a container of anxiety medication for Virgil as needed. Three bottles of different aspirins and a bottle of... I don't know what. The bottle said to take two a day. The date he got it also said last week. It says there were a hundred pills in a bottle. But there were only two pills left in the bottle. To take that many pills, no matter what they are, can be very dangerous. Maybe I should check the label to see if there's anything too extreme to worry about. Side effects include headaches, nausea, twisted thoughts, and hellish nightmares high mood swings, and depressive episodes. Oh boy, this is terribly bad in Patton's case because he is the embodiment of emotion. The last two will affect him severely if he did take too many of these pills. What kind of pills were they anyway? The label is scratched off so I can't tell what they are, but hopefully Patton is doing well. Wait, one of the effects is hellish nightmares. Holy Einstein! Pat is curling to sleep and I left him alone. I should be in the room just in case something happens. I set my fingers and appear back to my room where Patton is tossing and turning in his bed. His face was scrunched up and he was sweating bullets. I quickly sprung into action trying to comfort morality. How do you comfort though? All I know how to do is place him in my lap and rock him back and forth as I stroke his hair. This was quite a calling practice. Plus Patton started to look content with his place and was kind of precious. I didn't want him to go back to his bed, even if it is cleaned off now. I also didn't want to leave him to his laundry. So, for a great deal of the night, I sat in satisfaction, rocking the dad figure back and forth in my arms. Chapter 5, Role-Playing Games, Patton's Point of View. My eyes flutter open, not giving me a chance to see any of my surroundings. I groan in pain as I use my left hand to feel around for my glasses. My fingertips then hit their plastic rims and I grab them as my fingers fumble with the framing. As I pinch my fingertips, I put on my glasses and blink a couple times to adjust to the new sights. The room had black paint and painted on stars. I had no idea where I was or what I was doing. My heart started picking up. I think I was kidnapped by deceit at Remus, like in the dream I had last night. But when I'm ready to cry, I turn over to a navy blue recliner with an exhausted look and sleeping peacefully with his glasses tilted off his face a little. Did he look peaceful and kinda cute? I mean, of course he would look cute to me. He's one of my children. I didn't want to disturb him by any means. It has to be a good month since he was on his normal sleeping schedule. We have been so worried about him. My precious little nerd was so adorable. So I decided to go I decided to go back to my room. I was originally going to make breakfast, but I wasn't particularly hungry, so in that case, I made the choice to skip this meal. I was too tired to muster the strength to teleport to my room, so I made the long jury by the hallway to my blue door. I tried to remember all that happened the night before. All I remember is the smell of popcorn and Logan and a pillow I've never used before. I realized I didn't remember much because my dreams took over my thoughts. I get to my room and flop back onto my bed. Nothing good has happened within the last year, so I decide to go to my shelves and pick out a good family scrapbook to look through for now. Looking back reminds me that I have hope. That since I was once happy, I could be happy again. I draw with the scrapbook with all the pictures of Thomas from family gatherings. Even if we didn't physically take a picture, the Mindscape computer system keeps save files of moments where one of the sides was being the most active. Like there were tons and tons of scrapbooks of when Thomas was in place because Roma was the most charged during those perfectly prized periods. There was also a wagon full of scrapbooks from important study sessions and quizzes Thomas has taken because Logan was the most charged then. I flipped open the book looking at photographs of Thomas and his family. How he loved his family, his mom and dad took very good care of him and he would never be able to repay them enough. His brother, though annoying as a child, was one of the greatest things that had happened to him. 
I look up and somehow there was a copy of 2005's Just Like Heaven sitting on the bed. I got a sudden flashback to the nightmares that Thomas had regarding killing his brother. My headache grew stronger and the knot in my stomach grew. I ran to the bathroom as fast as I could, slamming the door behind me. As I threw up, I felt like all my guts were coming out and once again, he wouldn't be able to let these intrusive thoughts go. Half because you can't force them out. And also because Remus was right behind me. Hello, Padre. I see you aren't feeling too well. I went to the sink and cleaned off my face as well as I could. It is barely hard to see the Duke is acting off because he was so unpredictable. But he did seem to not be himself in the most Remus way of doing that. I... <clears throat> he seemed to gag a bit, which was odd. Was he gagging at the bar? Remus loved stomach bugs. Like this week it collect the vomit in plastic bags. I... I can see that. He kept trying to talk, looking at the toilet and stopping, and then is when he stopped the get-up and turned into a queasy deceit. I flushed the toilet, hoping that it would help, but it was too late. He also leaned over the toilet and threw up. I took a wet towel and put it against his forehead as, he, as I brushed back his hair and shushing him, hoping it would calm down. After he was done with his fit, he tried to act as nothing happened and regained his composure. I wouldn't let him get sick slip past my thoughts that quickly. Are you feeling well this seat? He looked uncomfortably and as if he was embarrassed that you had been asked that question. Yes, I just have a weak stomach when it comes to vomit and other things in that nature. I was about to just silent, just let him slip away when so many questions are willing my head. I need at least three of them answered. Why were you impersonating Remus? Couldn't you just ask him to litigate me for you? He would have done it, I'm sure. Zizi tried to speak, but had a coughing fit instead. I leaned up the toilet seat in case he was going to blow again, but he slowly calmed himself down. I handed him a bottle of water, and he took it forcefully and chugged the whole thing before throwing the bottle in the trash and answering my question. It is all a part of the role-playing games. When I see a chance to tug at someone's heartstrings or cause chaos, I will jump at that opportunity. I got the memo that you were thinking about Thomas's brother and sent a copy of Just Like Heaven to throw you off guard. I didn't know that throwing you off guard meant that you'd be getting sick. Otherwise, I would have gladly sent up Remus. Did somebody say you were Remus? The duke appeared from inside the toilet bowl, hanging out of the edge from the inside as if he was using it to rest his har arms on like a hot tub. Hey, Tweedledum, I was just instigating our favorite source of sorrow. If you want, I can leave you to it. You do what you want with our delightful, dreary, doubtful dad. Grandma sank down further into the toilet. Nah, I'm good for now, Dee. He looks like he's already been shattered. It wouldn't be much help here. You could keep at it. The Duke reached up and flushed the toilet, and down he went with the chunks of deceit's dinner. Well... Don't want to pester you if Sir Diarrhea thinks that you broke enough. Then that is probably the best finish line to stop at. I will be back, though. And with that, the snake sunk down, and... To be back when Patton was in the position for his torture. Chapter 6 The Fall. So here I was, alone in the bathroom with no one to turn to and nowhere to run. I wish that someone could understand. The stress of being the one with the most. to be the most responsible that must be accountable for everyone's actions. I affect Thomas the most. Whatever I think and feel is what he does too. I opened my mirror cabinet and take an aspirin. I, said, I decided to take three. I don't know how many I was supposed to take, but the extra one just felt right. Right next to it was an empty spot where my antidepressant pills used to sit. I don't remember actually taking them all, but I guess I need more. I'm not supposed to get more until the end of the month. I have two more weeks to get a new bottle. I don't know how I'm supposed to do anything without them. I remember when Virgil caught me overdosing a year or two ago. He made sure to have control over my meds for six months. 
He gave them to me when necessary, but he wouldn't let me have the bottle, especially when it was in my room. After a while, Logan told him to give him back control of my pills because I've learned my lesson and I am smart enough not to do that. That's right. I'm here thinking about memories when I need to go back to my scrapbooks. I sat back on my bed, opening back up the scrapbook I was looking through before I went to my room. I looked up after 15 minutes or so to stretch my neck, but I saw something different. It was a glitter scrapbook with no definable cover. I leaped out of bed to grab it. Glitter was being left on my hands, and it kind of itched, but for the most part, it looked really cool. I opened it up on the floor this time, since I didn't want to get my bed glittery. And I opened it up to the first page. Hello, I am sure you're opening this scrapbook because you have a longing for the past. This book will give you the past and let you relive it. Experience what makes you feel joy when there is nothing left in you. Gaze upon the memories that melt you into a puddle. Overall, don't forget to keep your map nearby on this trip down memory lane. The letters seem fake to mean anything. This is most likely one of those dumb inspirational quotes that they put before or after sad movies. I flipped the book to the next page to find that the scrapbook was blank. I flipped through all the pages over and over for some form of a picture or a memory, but nothing came up. I took the book to my bed, not having the right mindset to care about what gets on my bed or not, and put it under my pillow to throw it in the pit. I laid down on my bed, looking up at the ceiling. The mo mobile over my bed was soothing, but nothing to calm my running thoughts. I then decided to go out to the balcony and throw this trash book out then and there to get out of my way. My room was cluttered enough. I didn't need junk that didn't mean anything or didn't work with how the mind palace functioned. I walked onto the balcony, book in my quaking hands. Maybe this shouldn't just be death for the book. The dark bit below the balcony led to nowhere. It was just where they threw trash out and watched it disappear into the darkness. What went down there never came back up. I couldn't take it anymore, though. I had to do it. I had to... And it here and now, before anyone could stop me, before I stopped myself, before anything changed in my mind. I ran back to my room and opened up the scrapbook to an empty page. I grabbed the pen that Virgil got for me, Christmas, and began to write. Dear fam, I, L-Y, I love each and every one of you, and I do want you to forget that. I know this is tough, and I know this will be a lot to process, but I'm better now. You must accept that. Please make sure Thomas doesn't get into too much trouble. I love him greatly. I hate risking you all by doing this, but I can't deny anymore that I'm not good enough to be with you guys. It's just so hard to make sure that Thomas does the right thing, but I always fail. What is my purpose besides being the villain of the story? Virgil, remember to breathe. I know that you can be stressed. Keep breathing and things will turn out okay in the end. Okay can help you with anything. I believe in you, Virg. You have the strength that I didn't to get through this. You will always be my dark, strange son. Roman, keep me in your creations. I have always been proud of you and your work. Do not let me or my absence keep you from pursuing your dreams. You can marry the second most handsome prince in the world. I can't wait to see what you turn this into. Keep smiling. Logan. I give you a glass orb with my morality in it. Thomas's sense of right and wrong is contained within this jar. Please take care of it. This jar is the dust version of me. Hand it like you would take care of me, though. There's something I'd like to tell you, though. I have had a major crush on you for the longest time. You are calm, kind, and smart. You don't smile a lot, but when you do, it's the best thing in the world to see. I love you. Everyone, please take care. Patton Sanders. I grabbed a jar from under my desk and went to sit on my bed. I took off my glass glasses and gently placed them on the side table. I then ripped off the heart patch on my dress and placed it inside the jar. Come out of me. I sat under my breath to start the ritual. I started hacking like crazy. It felt as if I was going to throw up my insides. I literally was, though. Light blue gloom came out of me and I slowly was drained of color as the jar kept filling to the top with my mor morality aura. 
I ripped the note out of the scrapbook and taped it to the jar. I then placed the jar on the pillow at the head of my bed and walked back out to the balcony. I slowly tied off my cat hoodie and then that was being used as a cardigan. I smiled softly, knowing that Logan was the one who got it for me. I tied the jacket around the post of the balcony and hung it onto the scrapbook tight. The wind rushed through my hair and I started to sob. This is it. I cried as I climbed over the barrier of the balcony. I sat on the edge, just sobbing for what seemed like days when I saw the sun peek over the horizon. Three, two, one. I let go of the edge, holding on tight of the glittery scrapbook. I thought I felt a hand brush over my shoulder, but I couldn't tell. My tears stopped as I held my breath. Millions of thoughts rushed through my head at once. I looked up at the balcony as one last goodbye, but then I saw a sobbing deceit crying over the railing with an arm stretched out. That is it for today, folks. If you like the story, uh, stay tuned next week for part two of the series. Doop, doop, doop. And down below will be the links to my Wattpad and the story I've written, which is the story. So next time you could read along or you could read ahead, whichever one you like. I don't mind. My social media links are also in the description if you would like to do the social media thingy things. This Saturday, hopefully there'll be a, a broken prince. If not, then there'll be something else. <laughs> that, that literally could be anything. I don't know why I had to make that announcement. Um... Additionally, um, we're going back to school, so with school, remember to take breaks and do things and stay hydrated, but most importantly, you need to remember to do your best.